Welcome to making video games with Python lesson six. In this video, we're going to introduce how to add decisions to our games to check to see if the zombie has eaten uh, the turkey or if the crosshairs have somehow, you know, marked the zombie. In both situations, again, neither character is going to want to sit there and take it. So we're going to move them to random locations. So let's get to it. So let's just take a quick look to see what we have so far. So one of the things we've added to the game since the last video is that we also have the turkey moving. Uh, if you recall, we can make an image move on its own by simply giving it a set speed and then using the move function along with the value of true. Again, just kind of show you the code. Uh, this is what I just finished discussing. So our job now is to you know, let's add some interaction between uh, the zombie and the turkey, as well as the crosshairs and the zombie. In order to do that, we have to now dive back into our game library. Let me close the game out. And notice that in addition to set speed move, the game object, which again has functionality that's available to the image, to the animation, to all your objects in the game, also has a collided with function. Now the collided with function is pretty straightforward. It accepts some other objects. So what does one object want to do when it collides with another one? Uh, you'll see that there's an additional parameter of the shape to use as part of the collision. Again, we're gonna explore this in a different video game. Um, but in the end, if the two objects have collided, it will return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. So it's a pretty straightforward function. It simply is going to tell you if the two objects have collided. So let's see how we implement this. So we're going to say if zombie.collided with, I guess I should have left the game library open too. Just so you can see that there's that connection between uh, the library and what I what I write. Uh, again, zombie being the image which inherits all the functionality from the game object. So again, what do we want to check? We want to check to see if the zombie has collided with the turkey. And at this point, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to write the word yum. And let's see. Let's see if we can minimize this. And we'll put this over here because I think the game window pops over here. <clears throat> All right, so you can see here, you know, the words yum uh, immediately started popping up. And uh, you'll see that it came up a little bit more because it crossed over again. So we are able to detect when the zombie has collided with the turkey. Now let's do something a little bit more. Because again, our players aren't going to be looking at the shell for information. They're going to be looking at the game for information. So we're going to borrow what we learned from the last video that we can move an image. Which, actually, no, it's not the zombie that's going to move. It's the turkey that's going to move. Again, the turkey's not going to sit there and take it every time the zombie tries to chomp on it. It's going to move to a location, hopefully a random location. All right, so, uh, so the move to function needs an X and a Y. Now we saw this with the crosshairs. Now in this case, it made sense for us to move the crosshairs to wherever the mouse was. As, as part of the turkey, we don't want to do that. We don't want to move the turkey to where the mouse is. We want to move the turkey to a random location. So we're going to create variables X and do exactly that. Give it a random value using the randint function that comes from the random library which also gets imported as part of the, uh, the game library. So in order to use ran int, you have to provide a lower bound and an upper bound. Now you might say, well, why'd you choose 100 and 700? That's because our game has a width of 800. So by choosing 100, it's not gonna be, gonna be all the way on the left side. And by choosing 700, it's not gonna be all the way on the right side. So it kind of keeps it within the screen. Uh, let's do the same thing for
our why. So again, using 100 and 500 guarantees that we stay within the 600 height of our video game. All right, so let's see what happens. And I'm gonna put the code up so we can now associate every time they collide. So hopefully they collide soon. <laughs> That's gonna be a very long video. Come on, there we go. All right, so notice that the zombie and the turkey collided. They might collide again here. No, they just missed each other. I'm gonna try one more time. This should do it right here. There we go. All right, so the turkey's not gonna take it. Every time the zombie tries to eat it, it's gonna move to a random location. Now let's do the same thing for the zombie and the crosshair. In that, and if you allow me, I'm gonna do a little copy and paste. <laughs> Save myself a little bit of writing, typing. So if the zombie collides with the mouse, let's move the zombie to a different location. Now you might say, well, why are you colliding with the mouse and not the crosshair? Reason being, uh, the way the collision function works is that it's gonna take the image. So I don't wanna collide when the edge of the circle hits the zombie, I wanna collide when that little red dot collides with the zombie. And that little red dot, its position is mouse.x, mouse.y. Or if you kinda of see, see a little arrow on the screen, that is my mouse. So I don't wanna collide with the crosshairs, I wanna collide with the mouse. It just happens to be that the crosshairs are coming along for the ride. All right, so let's try to run it. And let's see that happen. Now we'll be able to control more of that interaction uh, with the zombie because we're controlling the the mouse and there we go so you can see here every time the mouse collides with the zombie the zombie is moving to a random location so we've added interaction now where the objects on the screen can interact with each other and as well as us the player can interact with uh, the images on the screen so let's go back to our presentation let's review what we've done so in this video, we introduced uh, the if statement. Now, if statements are crucial to any video game. Again, that's how a video game can decide what needs to happen next. Uh, for our scenario, we've chosen that when the zombie you know, eats the turkey, the turkey moves to a random location. Similarly, if our crosshairs you know, shoot, I don't want to go, I, the idea of shooting is coming up. Uh, but if the crosshairs collide with the zombie, the zombie is also not going to sit there and take it. It will also move to a random location. So hopefully you're excited about finishing the game and enjoy.